What's up guys, Dull Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to another SPQR Historian video. This one, we've got the third Emperor from the Year of the Four Emperors, the eighth overall Emperor, the life of Emperor Vitalius, the gluttonous Emperor. So, yeah, uh, obviously he, he comes down, and then Otto ends up offing himself, and then here we are. So, link to the original video down below. Let's jump into it. Described as a sluggard and a glutton. Aulius Vitellius has been written off by history as a titular head of a rebellion without the command of his troops or the know-how how to rule the empire once he was elevated to the position of emperor. He was the third emperor of the year of the four emperors. Born 15 AD, he is the first emperor not born into a senatorial family. His father became a senator only later in life, but with his amicable charm was able to ingratiate himself into aristocratic circles. Aulius Vitellius spent most of his youth on the Isle of Capri with the self-imposed exiled Emperor Tiberius, where he was able to gain favor of the Empress Caligula because of his love of chariot racing, and later on was able to befriend Claudius for his dice playing, and lastly Nero, who appreciated both of these talents. And the one thing I've noticed about this guy is in every story that they've talked, like every uh, video that he's been referenced in, he just seems like one of the bros. He's like friends with everyone. He's friends with the troops. He's friends with all the nobles. He's like friends with everyone. I, I, like, I want to know how he ends up... He's got to piss somebody off to get killed. At public events, Vitellius often persuaded Nero to singing and playing the lute, something Nero rarely declined. Vitellius' father seems to have been a well-respected man who was consul no less than three times. He was governor of Syria and was left in command of Rome when Emperor Claudius attended the invasion of Britain. Vitellius, however, inherited none of his father's better qualities, and his friendships with the emperors granted him positions elevated beyond his capabilities. But he was consul in 48 AD, and proconsul of Africa in 60, where it seems he acquitted himself admirably. But Vitellius' most fortuitous moment in his political career was in his appointment as governor of Lower Germania by Emperor Galba in 68 AD. He was chosen more for his lack of military experience rather than his record of service. Galba was hoping by putting Vitellius, who without military experience and his reputation for gambling and gluttony, would reduce the possibility of rebellion by the Rhine legions. If so, it would prove to be Galba's most critical mistake. Despite his lack of military experience, Vitellius was able to win the affection of the Rhine legions. With his good nature and sociable personality. On the 1st of January 68 AD, the rebellion began with the legions of both of the Germanian provinces refusing to swear fealty to Galba. The revolt was instigated by their legates Fabius Valens and Aulius Caecina, and they soon got support from the legions from Gaul, Britain, and Rhetia. The Vitellian forces were split into two different columns led by Valens and Caecina. They start their march south to dispose Galba. Vitellius, realizing his lack of military know-how, stayed behind in Gaul, mustering reinforcements with the plan to follow on later. They were well on their way when they got news that Otto had usurped the throne. However, undeterred, they continued their march south. And Cassina's column was able to pass over the Alps sooner than expected, entering the Lombardy plains and setting up camp in Cremona where Valens arrived soon after. See our previous video on Otto to see the situation in northern Italy in more detail. What was the name of this before it was called the Lombardic Plains? Because I'm assuming it didn't get that name until the invasion of the Lombards, right? But suffice to say, Otto's considerably smaller army was defeated, despite winning a couple of initial skirmishes. And instead of prolonging the civil war, which Otto had the means of doing, he committed suicide to prevent further suffering and Vitellius was recognized as the new Emperor of Rome. He entered the capital in early June 69 AD. The forces who had been loyal to Otto were reassigned to distant provinces, and the Danube legions, who had thrown in their lots with Otto, were still discontent, but returned to their bases. Vitellius barely had time to form his own regime. Man, that's hilarious. Okay, I understand who he pissed off now. You get all these guys that helped you out and you just send them back to the frontier. It's like, yeah, I go back, fight some more Germans, have fun. ...before news arrived from the east. Vespasian, 
was proclaimed emperor by the troops of Egypt, soon followed by the troops in Judea, Syria, and by the Danube legions who had marched to the aid of Otto, and now they all proclaimed Vespasian as their emperor. The Danube legions were the closest to Italy, so they once again turned towards Rome. They were led by Antonius Primus, the commander of the legions from Pannonia, and the procurator of Illyricum. To make matters worse for Vitellius, Valens had fallen ill, and Caecina, who was now a consul, had begun collaborating with the Flavians, unbeknownst to Vitellius, who sent him north to confront Primus. Caecina had been plotting with the commander of the Roman fleet stationed at Ravenna to switch sides. However, Caecina's troops refused to follow in his lead and put him in chains. When Valens had recovered from his illness, he set out for Gaul to raise additional troops, but were caught by the Flavian forces, and he was eventually executed. Caecina's troops, now without their general leading them, advanced towards Cremona and engaged the Flavian troops led by Primus, almost at the exact same spot where they had defeated Otto just a few months ago. However, this time the battle didn't turn in their favor. Italia's forces were soundly defeated and Cremona was sacked by the victors. Primus continued south towards Rome. This is one of the things I find so weird about like the, the different battles in the Roman Civil War. It, it's or in, the, in the different Roman Civil Wars. It's often like just random towns getting sacked that have like nothing to do with the battle, right? It's all infighting mostly between, at least in this time period, mostly between people originally from the city of Rome. And yet they'll sack some random city in northern Italy or sack some city in fucking Gaul. Uh, and it's like, <laughs> those people have nothing to do with the, the infighting that's happening in the capital. And at his last effort, Vitellius tried to thwart their advance in the Apennine passes, but his forces switched sides. And Vitellius hurried back to Rome, where Vespasian's older brother, Sabinus, was the city prefect at the time convinced him to abdicate. However, the Praetorian Guard and the German forces still in his command refused Vitellius' abdication, probably fearing their own positions. They had put him on the throne. If he fell, who knows what would happen to them once Vespasian was emperor. Yeah, fair at best, enough. they would probably have been sent off to far reaches of the empire, and at worst, they would have been killed. So they stirred up a mob and forced Sabinus, together with Vespasian's son, Domitian, the future emperor, to flee to the capital, where Sabinus was soon killed by the Italian German troops, and the temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus was set ablaze. Domitian managed to escape, and within two days, Primus' forces reached Rome. In a last move to escape the inevitable, Vitellius hid in the doorkeeper's quarters, piling furniture to prevent anyone from forcing the door, which of course was futile. Vitellius was dragged from his hiding place and hauled around the streets half-naked, tortured and eventually killed, and thrown into the Tiber River. Vitellius was emperor for eight months, and he spent his short time as emperor indulging in excessive drink, often eating up to four banquets each day, feasting on rare delicacies. God damn. The only noteworthy thing he did during his short reign was he expanded the imperial bureaucracy beyond the imperial freedmen, allowing equites to take part in the imperial civil service. Meanwhile, this patient. So, so, equites meaning like people from the. Uh, like that class? I guess that kind of makes sense, right? Because this is a class that he's from. Was still in Egypt, awaiting the outcome. His initial plan was that the governor of Syria would lead the forces into Italy. But when the Danube legion signed up, they were able to act quicker than expected. It's interesting to think about what would happen if Otto had continued the civil war with Vitellius. It was the Danube legions who had eventually defeated Vitellius, and they had been on their way to support Otto who decided to commit suicide instead of prolonging the civil war. Either way, we will never know. Vespasian was now the sole emperor. Yeah, it's, it's kind of sad, because like the, the dude was like very clearly more worried about Rome than himself, and the guys coming to back him up were able to win the war. And he, he did it because he didn't want the war to continue, but the war continues anyway. So, you know, you might have had Otto as emperor for who knows how long, 
and a guy that's actually probably going to do what's best for the for you know the empire instead of what's best for himself like so many emperors do in the roman empire and he's the last emperor of the year of the four emperors and he will come to be the first ruler of a new dynasty in rome the flavians hey guys and once again thanks for watching the video if this is your first video from spqr history i would encourage you to subscribe like the video as we plan to make a video for each of the roman emperors and i'm already looking forward to making the next video on vespasian finally some stability in the empire and as usual suggested reading and sources are in the description of the video and i hope to see you in the next video i really should like write down these reading lists and go through it it'd be really interesting to go through um you know, hopefully i can get enough time to read through a lot of this stuff because that's one thing i definitely need to start doing more that i haven't really done since i was in school uh is just like read a ton. I, when I was in school, I was, you know, I had a bunch of free time because, you know, there's not, I was basically broke, right? There's nothing else to do when you're in school. So I, I would try to read at least one book a week. Uh, and I was pretty consistent on that for a couple of years. But then, you know, you start uh, having more free time and having more money and you get away from doing that because you have other ways to spend your time. And yeah, but. Maybe I'll, I'll get back into that and start reading more about Rome again. But anyway, let me know what you think below. <clears throat> like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.